Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside me today. Today I wanna to focus on picking an index style release date. I'm not gonna get into thumb buttons and hinges, although if you do wanna see a video on picking a thumb button or a hinge that best suits your style, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you, and if there's enough interest, I'd be glad to make that video. But like I said, today we're focusing on index style releases, which are by far the most common style of compound releases, and particularly for guys like me who like to bow hunt. So on the tree here, I have four different releases release styles from three different manufacturers and hopefully by going through some of the pros and cons of each one you'll be able to make a better decision at home and pick the best release style that suits your needs. So before I go into the intricacies of each one there are just three overarching broad things broad topics that I like to focus on when it comes to picking an index style release. The first one is the length of the shank or the shaft which is the length from the wrist strap itself to the head or to the caliper portion of the release. If that is super long or super short short that really dictates how you can shoot that. The second thing of course is whether it's a buckle or a velcro style release aid. The velcro style release aid obviously offers infinite adjustability but it can be noisier and you can not get it to the perfect place on your wrist unlike a buckle strap where uh, where you can set it on hole three four five whatever and always having that consistent spot. The third thing is whether the trigger is a straight trigger or it's swept back in kind of a U shape and I have an example of that here up with the true ball stinger. The difference between a straight figure and a curled or a swooped back or swept back finger can be huge depending on how you like to operate the release. So let's take a look at first here the true fire which is a velcro style release aid. I'm not going to put it on just quite yet. I just want to open it up. This one has a very long shank, meaning from the connection point here of this piece of all thread up to where the uh, release actually attaches to your D-loop is very long. This release strap is a budget style release and it is marketed towards women and youth. However, I bought this for my wife. I didn't consider the shaft length or the shank length and it ended up being too long and she was really reaching out with her finger. This is something, even though it claims it's adjustable, I would have to really screw this in, probably unscrew the entire thing, cut off this shrink tubing, this rubber seal here, cut this all thread shorter. It's a mess just for buying a little bit more inexpensive release aid. I wish that I went up and bought a better one, which is what I eventually did for her, so that way I didn't have to do all that adjustment nonsense. Now, for a full-grown guy like me, I'll put this on here. This isn't too bad in terms of the length. I don't need a whole lot of adjustment. Again, noisy, lots of Velcro. And it's pretty tight right now. I can loosen up a little bit, but I can never really find the exact spot each and every single time. So now you'll see with my hand, I'm six foot four, well over 200 pounds. I got pretty big hands. This release comes up right into the middle of my palm, right into the base of my middle finger, which is where I like to start all of my releases in terms of their length and anybody that comes into the shop as well. I like to start somewhere here at the base of the fingers. This means when I'm actually clipped onto the bow and I add tension, it brings that release out more and I'm able to get that trigger more into this portion of my finger. I do not want it out here at the tip. I want it into this second portion, the second knuckle of my finger. The more out here towards the tip it is, the more I likely am to slap it or punch it or do something to the release that is going to cause inaccuracy and tuning issues. Another thing to consider, this is the intricacies or the individual parts of the release. You'll notice that it doesn't fold back or anything, so it's always constantly there, which is nice because when I need it in a hunting situation, it's always there. I can grab it. When I'm working around trees, and tree stand sticks and something, it's gonna be clanking off everything, so I would have to flip it around to the back of my hand. That's not a problem, I've been doing this for years, but this will come back inevitably and wrap you in the back of the knuckle at four o'clock in the morning when you're climbing a tree and it flipping hurts. So it's not something I enjoy. I like a wrist strap release that's able to fold back either on the underside or the top side of my wrist just for that little bit of ease of comfort. In terms of the trigger itself, it is a slightly swept back trigger. Now you'll notice that this release aid does not self-close. Um, sometimes they do, they are a spring-loaded system and they will self-close. I prefer that style. We'll get to those here in a second. This one does not. The trigger is acts like it's swept back, but it's really not. It's just bowed and it actually the tip and the base of the trigger stay in the same place. I prefer the swept back. If I'm going to be in this such of a tiny trigger, I like it to be swept back more so I can really get my finger into it, really get some meat into it. Let me pull the bow back here and actually show you what I'm talking about. I'm not going to fire this arrow. I don't have a target out here with me today, but at least you can see how this release would play 
on my hand. First things first though, listen to when I draw this for the first time. You can just hear all the Velcro settling in. So again, I'm not gonna shoot this, I'm just gonna bring my hand and over. You'll see how deep in that trigger is on my hand. It's clear back into my second knuckle. That's where I really want it. Because when I come back to anchor and I wanna actually get the bow stabilized, I don't want my finger to be reached clear out. I don't wanna look like this. I don't want to come to anchor and then have my finger clear out here and then have my tip of my finger touching that trigger. I want to be in deep just like this and then I'm able to squeeze that off and able to actually execute a clean release. So I'll put a little bit of tension here. My arrow's probably going to fly off. I'll get my finger clean in there, keep pulling and squeezing, pulling and squeezing, and the arrow's able to go down range and I have so much more control. That's what I really like about certain index style releases. You can really shorten them up, just like this one, which makes it good. That's a plus in my book for this release. I like a little bit more adjustability on the trigger, I like the trigger to be a little bit bigger, so on and so forth, but that's a good style of release. If this had a buckle on it, it actually, in my opinion, would be a really solid release. All right, so let's take off this Velcro one. Let's get to a more budget-friendly model in a buckle system. So this is a True Fire. It's so old, I couldn't even tell you uh, which uh, model it is. I wanna say it could have been like one of the original Patriots. I have no idea. I'll try to find links for everything though, for all these releases and put them in the description. This is another uh, cheaper release. This this is a true ball stinger. This is a buckle model, and I shot this thing for years. Uh, much to my chagrin, it does not have nearly as much trigger adjustability, just like the old True Fire that I like in all of my release styles, uh, but it works out okay. Again, with the buckle style system, I don't get the infinite adjustability, but I do get to pick a nice comfortable setting. So for me, I find for most of the buckles that are for the adult size, I put it on the number four hole. That's where I start and that's where it is. I have some looseness in here. I could spin it around my wrist when I need to, uh, but I'm not so tight in that I can't function or I'm going to have that Velcro popping sound when I draw the bow back for the first time. Lots of similar features to the True Fire we were just looking at. The arm is very stiff. This one is very broken in though. It does swing back a little bit, but you notice it doesn't swing and stay back. I mean, you can put it back, but it's just going to pop and it's going to continue to flop forward. Like I said, I use this release for a very long time. It's very well worn in and very broken in, but it's always there and available to me. Same thing here in terms of the shank length. I actually had to cut this uh, rubber tubing off. I had to cut this piece of all thread off because it was so long. It was like clean up here, even on me. And that is way too long. And like I said, I have pretty big hands. So for an average size person, it was definitely be way too long. So I had to do some DIY rigging this up to get it to fit. And for you at home, if you're not used to doing something like that, or you don't understand where your release should be in terms of your hand placement, it can be a really big bear. So I have it there right at the base of my middle finger again. This is a swept bat trigger. And you can see here, and I'll pull up the true fire to show you. When you have the caliper head and you actually want to adjust or rather see where the swept back nature of the trigger is, you can see how far down the stinger, which is in my right hand, your left side of the screen, you can see how much further down that trigger goes, which brings it even deeper into your fist. Now, there is a point where it can go too deep, okay, where you're actually losing sensitivity. I like the sensitivity of this part of my finger here. That's why I like the trigger there. I don't want it out of the tip of my finger. We have the tendency to punch it. I don't want it in too deep because I can't feel then how far I've gone in traveled, and particularly in a hunting situation where I might have to wait 10, 15, 30 seconds or a minute for the deer to clear a tree or to continue to walk into my shooting lanes. So I really want that medium sensitivity, if you will. So I'll well, put it up here on the bow. You'll see how deep that trigger sits in my hand. So actually, when it comes to clipping it onto the bow, because the jaws actually close by themselves, unlike the True Fire, which I have to close manually, which is kind of a royal pain, I can operate this with my ring finger. I could use it with my middle finger. It's just too deep to do with my index finger, which is fine. I can clip this on and it's automatically clipped on there. Don't have to worry about anything. In terms of anchoring, you notice no Velcro popping. I'll never shoot a Velcro style wrist strap release again. Look how deep that sits. That's almost too deep. 
it almost comes in too deep. It's actually clear into the actual crease of the second knuckle instead of more like up in here in the middle of the second knuckle. So when it comes into losing that sensitivity, you'll see here how deep this trigger actually sits. And if I just make a fist, make a fist, make a fist, make a fist, then the arrow flies down range. That's perfect. I want that nice surprise release and I want to have a very controlled squeeze of almost my whole hand. I don't want to be gripping the release with my whole hand, but that concept is better than just trying to move just my index finger. Then I will be more likely and more inclined to slap the trigger, punch the trigger, and cause that target panic that we all know so well from an index style release. So this release is great. It can rotate the head. It's nice and stiff. It won't rotate too far out of the way when you're in the tree stand. My biggest complaint though with this release in its price point in particular is the trigger adjustability. Now there is a trigger setting on this release and the further you go up in price point, the better the trigger sensitive release um, system will be. Um, but the problem with this one is, is there is still so much travel before it actually sears over. Okay, so I can set this so that way it sears over very quickly, but I can't get rid of the adjustment of how much travel there is prior to it searing over. Now, in its price point, that makes total sense. But for me, as someone who likes, I like my index releases a little bit hotter. Um, it's kind of a little bit of a weird thing of mine, but I know exactly when this release is going to go off because I can feel the travel, 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 and then it hits like a back wall right before that sear takes over. And then I can kind of like lock up and panic a little bit. I don't want that. I don't want to know when the travel is going to be done. I just want it to be a nice, clean, 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 and all of a sudden the bow takes off. That's what I want. That's my biggest complaint with this release is that I can get rid of the time after the sear engages and I can shorten that up very significantly, but I can't get rid of that travel at the beginning. That's very common in a more budget style release date. I think that's only like 35, 40 bucks. Very common in that price point. But for me, I like to be able to adjust both the time of travel to the sear as well as the time after the sear. Uh, it just allows for me to have a lot more control in my shot in the hunting situation as well as when I shoot this for my hunting bow to practice 3D in those local range shoots. So all these manufacturers that I'm looking at here real quick, they do make budget model index style releases well on up to target style. For example, Trueball, this is the Stinger. It's very cheap, but they make the Execute, which I don't even know the price point of it. I think it's at least three digits though, which is a tournament target style index style release date. It's like a multiple sear option. So there, it's not like you can't find cheap and expensive index style releases from all the major companies. For example, we're about to talk about Scott here, and I'm going to start off. I have the Scott Ghost, but I also have the Scott uh, Jaws here, which is more like the two releases we just looked at. So we'll take a quick look at him first. I like Scott releases the most out of all of these brands because they will fold back and they will stay back, right? So I can put this onto my wrist here. So as you see, it folds back and it stays back. Now it still will pivot in 180 degrees side to side, but it's not going to come out and slap into a climbing stick when I'm climbing up the tree. And even better, I can flip it back over to the back side of my hand like I usually do, and it won't come over and clack me in the back of the knuckles when I'm climbing up the tree. Really like this style of fold back, fold on type of release. This is the Jaws from Scott. It has a straight trigger. It's slightly knurled, and it is a open and close of a two caliper system. It's not a straight and then the one hook or an open hook system like the Ghost is here, which we'll see in a minute. Both sides of these jaws do move. Now, unlike the Stinger and the True Fire, I'm thinking it's the Patriot, this one is a straight trigger and it's actually pretty short in terms of its length. It does make it a little bit different for me. I'm used to shooting more swept back trigger style, although I like the trigger adjustment on this Jaws than I do more on the Stinger and on the True Fire Patriot. So I am willing to take a straight trigger over better trigger adjustment. It does have springs on the inside, but it is a very nice sear system. So let's actually pick up the bow here. It's impossible without you actually holding a release to know. And if you're able to go to your local shop and try out some releases, I strongly recommend you do so. Although my shop and a lot of others in my area I know don't let you do that. It's tough to resell or at least tough to sell releases to begin with. The price margin is so low, but more importantly, it's tough to resell them when they're an open box because then people expect you basically to sell it for free, which is ridiculous. So it's really hard to find shops sometimes that'll let you try a release. What I like about this release, like I said earlier with the, um, 
with the true ball is that it will close by itself. I don't have to constantly flick it open and close and worry about it coming half open when I'm sitting here waiting for the deer to come into a particular shooting lane before I draw. Again, the trigger is gonna come right in the middle of my second knuckle. So let's take this bow for a spin. You'll notice where I anchor puts it right there perfectly in the middle of the meat of my index finger there. It allows me to have a nice clean anchor. And what I like about the adjustment on this release is that the adjustment has adjusted on the front side of the sear. So the stinger adjusted on the back side, travel, 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 then it sears over faster. This one, travel sear which is what I like a little bit more. Like I said earlier, I like my releases a little bit on the hotter side for hunting. It's just the way I like to operate. I know that I don't have to have a whole bunch of travel and that will lead to punching in the deer woods, which is something you don't want. Even with the short shots that I take, I don't like a lot of travel in my hunting release. I like when I start squeezing for it to go off rather quickly because I don't want that deer to have an opportunity of me clicking at it or bleh at it to stop it. And then it starts taking a half step and then I shoot it back of the lungs or even worse in the guts. I definitely don't want that so I like a short travel. So again we'll just kind of put a little bit of pressure here on the bow. Very light pressure, very right? It's pretty hot and that's the way I like it. Now when I'm actually at full draw and under full pressure there's not nearly as uh, light of tension there. It takes a little bit more travel but I like the adjustability of the Scott Jaws over the True Ball Stinger and the True Fire Patriot. Yes it is more money. I think it's in the $80 price range maybe $90 price range but I really like it because of the snapback feature. That's a huge win for me. Nice buckle strap system, neoprene, leather, the whole shebang. It's a really well put together caliper style release lease and I think for the price for me it's really well worth it. Okay so we've seen three different brands and three different of the same style of head meaning a dual caliper right it's a pair of pinchers that open and close. Sometimes you'll come across a single caliper where it's a straight wall and then the hook and just the hook moves and this is a fixed peg or a fixed part of the system and then sometimes you'll get an open hook and it literally is just a hook that snags onto your D loop and then it opens up like so. So that that is something that people like to debate on whether or not one is more accurate than the other. I personally have not found it to be more accurate, one to be more accurate than the other. I found it's a more about the archer than it is the equipment. But nonetheless, here's the Scott Ghost. And this one here has the, all the same adjustment adjustability as the Scott Jaws, but this one is a hook style release aid. And I wanna show you something that's very important that I've found with a hook style release aid or a half uh, hook so the the fixed jaw and then the one sear is that the trigger system on these dual caliper the pincher jaws has to be really far back in the release head that's true of both the true ball and this scott here back behind the jaws in order for those jaws to roll away from each other you have to get them at their fulcrum right so you have to get them back inside the release head more so than towards the front that's what's definitely true of the jaws here that brings that trigger back further closer to your hand so your release you can lengthen it or shorten it you have a little bit more play in there because it already starts back further when it comes to a rolled over uh, hook system or maybe just the one sear the trigger has to be closer to the sear which is at the front. So if I was to open up this release aid here, and I know it'd probably be tough to see, this is all the more that's on this hook, right? The whole caliper system or the whole sear system here is this little tiny hook up at the front, which means this trigger has to be close to that sear. It can't be back here. And if we look an actual location of where these hook onto the D loop, you can see that the jaws is almost an inch deeper, closer to your hand from the get go than the Scott Ghost. So that is something to consider when you go to play with the release if you're finding that the trigger is really far out of reach and you've run out of adjustment it probably is in location to the trigger I like finding ones that are closer to the center or the back end of the head that gives me a little bit more play I can play with this to adjust my draw length if I can't on the bow so on and so forth so that doesn't make this a bad release though I really like this release because this one has the most trigger adjustment that I've ever seen this one actually works off of a magnet sear which is really cool instead of working off of a spring system when you break in a spring 
And this is what I was alluding to earlier with the stinger. When you break in a spring to a particular place, you'll go, okay, here's the travel. Oh, there's the back wall of the back wall of the spring. And then it sears over. And then all of a sudden the bow takes off and you know it was going to go off. So that's something I like about this roller sear, this magnetic sear. I have no idea when it's going to go off. And I can set it a little bit hotter, which is something, like I said earlier with the jaws, that I really like to do. So this being a hook style release literally just hooks on like that. That's it. And I like to use my uh, middle finger behind the trigger just to kind of direct the release. And then I can use my thumb. I don't even have to look and it's on, right? I can just use my thumb. I can feel around the string. Here's the D loop right there's the hook and I'm on. Okay, I don't even have to look at it. With any style of dual jaw, dual caliper release, you have to look at it, which means your eyes have to leave the deer. You can't just go ha 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 and clip on. You gotta look at it, clip it on, then go back to the deer. Now, is that a big problem? I don't really think it is. I think it's a little bit over a height, but it is something that is definitely true. I've never had it ruin a hunt in my now 17 years of bow hunting where just clipping on my release and making not making eye contact with the deer anymore. It's never been an issue. Now, if you're like turning clear back around to do it and then look over, well, that's just silly. So I always recommend point in the direction of the deer, then look down, clip on, and then you can go back to looking at your critter again. Let's look at the trigger here real quick though. Again, Super simple, come back and you'll see how much further towards the tip of my finger this trigger is because of where it sits on the head. You can see it's actually in the crease of my first knuckle. Other triggers were clear back in here on the fleshy part of my second knuckle. This one is clear up here on the tip of the first crease between my tip of my index finger and my second uh, knuckle there. This allows for a little bit less sensitivity, at least in the way my hands operate. And so I have to really try to dig deep to get this trigger in a little bit further. Now I do like this trigger because it is very knurled. There's a lot of spikes to it, kind of like the Bomar nose button. There's a lot of spike to it, very tactile feel even through a light pair of gloves that I might use in the early season. A little bit of tension here on the string, very hot release here. So a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure, and there it goes. That's just the way I like it. Now, the one thing I can't feel with this release is travel. There, for me, there is no travel with this release. It's just pressure, 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 and it's gone. I really prefer that. I like to be adding pressure, almost like a true back tension release, where you're actually just adding back wall pressure into the release to set it off. Not a hinge where you actually have to have some sort of movement of rolling it over and getting it past the sear. This one, I literally feel like I'm just adding pressure, 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 and then the bow just goes off. I don't have that travel, 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 back wall. Oh, here it goes, and then the bow executes the shot, I actually just feel pressure and then it goes. Really, really like that. If I had this style with a trigger that's a little bit deeper and that same amount of trigger adjustability, this would be my favorite release of all time. I understand that's something that's very user specific and not everybody likes the hook style or the cal dual caliper or the single caliper style release. I understand that. But I do want to just make people aware that you can get releases in the index style world that are better than others in, in terms of their trigger adjustment, their travel, how hot or how cold you can set them and they can ultimately make your shooting experience a lot cleaner and a lot more fun because you're just enjoying your release more. Now that I'm 15, 16, 17 years into shooting bows and arrows, it's really nice that I have all of these releases and I can go, okay, this is what I did like, this is what I didn't like. So I know I just threw a lot of information at you there and I know I rambled on a little bit and I might have left you with more questions than actual answers. And if you do have questions more than actual answers, follow the links in the description below hit me up on Facebook and Instagram, send me an email, leave a comment on YouTube. And again, if you like this video and you want to see a video on handheld style thumb buttons and handheld style hinge releases, leave a comment down below. Let me know. Be happy to make that video for you folks at home. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation and we'll get to see you next time.